get to see everybody. Perfect weather, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to have you all here today at the White House. Um, and I also want to thank a few people before we start, not just the young people here who are also, some of you brought your parents. So let's see the parents. Woo! Give the parents a round of applause. But in addition to all of you, we've got a few pretty special guests. We've got some talented chefs and nutritionists here to teach us how to make healthy breakfasts, lunches, and snacks. So I want to first introduce uh, uh, Karen Grievison, who I just got to meet. Karen, where are you? There she is, over there. She's from my hometown, Chicago. Yay for Chicago. And then we have Todd Gray. Todd, where are you? Raise your hand. Todd is from my new hometown right here in Washington, D.C. And then we've got Sam Kath, who a lot of you probably met, but Sam is in charge of the uh, White House garden. So he oversees all of that along with uh, all of our wonderful White House chefs, everybody from the White House team. Raise your hands. All of our White House crew. And we also have Bahista Usuri uh, and the rest of the, the staff from the School Nutrition Association who are uh, on the front lines every day in our schools. So Bahista, where are you? And all of the nutrition experts. And Ellie Krieger, uh, one of the nutritionists from the Food Network. She's way in the back with her family. Thank you, Ellie. And I want to thank all the folks from the YMCA and Playworks. They helped us set up all the fun things that we're going to have to do after we get through talking. So let's give them a round of applause. The U.S. Department of Agriculture for joining us today and for all of his hard work and leadership in making our food and our schools healthier. He's been doing a phenomenal job. And, and, and it seems like just yesterday that Secretary Vilsack and I were out here to begin digging for the garden. Uh, and uh, it seems like just yesterday. Um, and one of our goals was to focus on the importance of educating our kids about healthy eating. So it wasn't just about planting a garden. It was also to begin to talk about nutrition and to highlight the little ways that each of us can add more healthy fruits and vegetables to our diet, something that I think about all the time as a mother. Uh, we felt that this was especially important right now when so many children in this nation uh, are facing health problems that are entirely preventable. So we've got our kids who are struggling with things that we have the power to control. Uh, right now, one in three children in this country are overweight or obese. And as I've said many times before, if we think we're dealing with a serious health problem now, you know, then we project out to 5, 10, 20 years from now uh, when we see these rates increase and all the illnesses that result from obesity, whether it's high blood pressure or heart disease, cancer, um, and believe it or not, which is a very surprising thing, medical experts are now warning that for the first time in history uh, of this nation, uh, we're headed for the next generation uh, being on track to have a shorter lifespan than us. That's the way we're going right now. Uh, and none of us wants that. None of us wants that for our children and for our children's futures. Even if we don't care about ourselves, we don't want that for our kids. Uh, we want our children to eat right, uh, not be just because it's the right thing to do, but because, quite frankly, healthy, good food tastes good. Uh, we want them to experience that. Uh, we don't just want our kids to exercise because we tell them to. We want them to exercise because it's fun uh, and they enjoy it. And we want them to learn now how to lead good, healthy lifestyles so that they're not struggling to figure out how to do that when they're older. Uh, but as a parent, uh, and I know all of you here today, we know that sometimes doing all that is easier said than done. Uh, because we all care, but it is becoming so increasingly difficult to provide all that for our kids. Um, and you all know that better than uh, 
anyone here as parents. Uh, we're all pulled in a million different directions, working hard, working long hours, trying to do everything, be perfect parents. Uh, we love you guys so much. We just want everything for you. But it's hard to do everything. And when you come home from a long day of work and the refrigerator is empty uh, and you know you don't feel like cooking, the easiest and sometimes the cheapest thing to do is to get in a fast food drive through We've all done it um, because we are overwhelmed and we don't know what the options are. Uh, and today, life is so different from when I was growing up, kids. And I know your parents tell you this. I tell my kids this. When I was growing up, fast food was a treat. You know, we couldn't afford to get fast food every week because my parents couldn't afford it. So it was something you did on a special occasion. Uh, we had pizza about once every school year, once every semester when we got good grades. That's when we got pizza. It was pizza day. That's what we got for getting good grades, pizza. Uh, and we didn't have dessert every single night. My mother would tell us dessert is not a right. It's a treat. Uh, so we had it on special occasions. We didn't have, and I have to tell my kids this, you don't get dessert every night of the week. Otherwise, it's not a treat. It's just something that you do. Uh, and my mother was also very clear in our household that you ate what she fixed. Mmm, yeah, yeah. You ate what she fixed, and if you didn't eat that, then you didn't eat. And in my household is if you say you're not hungry, then you have to eat your vegetables, and then you get up and leave, and you don't ask for anything else, and go to bed, right? So these are the kind of rules that I grew up with that all of your moms and your dads grew up with, and these are the kind of rules and boundaries and guidelines that we want to set for all of you. Uh, but in my household, there were no absolutes, right? I mean, we love good food, too. That's why I always say there's nothing that the first family loves more than a good burger, <laughs> right? And look, my favorite food in the whole wide world are french fries. I love them dearly. Deeply. I have a good relationship with french fries, and I would eat them every single day if I could. I really would. Uh, but I know that, uh, that if I'm eating the right things, and I tell my girls this, if you're getting the right foods for most of the time, then when it's time to have cake and french fries and on those special occasions, then you balance it out. So it's not about any absolute no's. It's just about striking a balance. And that's what I know your moms are trying to teach you all. That's what I'm trying to teach my girls. Um, but these days, even when parents do have the time and the resources to buy healthy foods and make a simple meal at home, the reality is that kids are spending a third of their time at school. All right? So we don't have control over what you eat when you're at school. So even when we're, wor when we're working hard to give our kids healthy food at home, if they go to school and eat a lunch that's loaded with calories and fat, then all the efforts that we try to instill at home, it, it get, gets knocked off a little bit. And many kids don't have any access to physical education in the schools. And that's something that's also changed. When I grew up and I went to public schools in my neighborhood, I don't care what you did, you had recess and you had gym on a very regular basis. So even though we're encouraging our kids to exercise, if they can't go to school and they get the same kind of exercise opportunities, then it makes our jobs as parents harder. Uh, and one of the things that I want to do is to begin focusing on ways that this administration uh, can help parents, kids, and families in tackling all these challenges. We want to make it a little easier on you all not just tell you what to do and what it should look like, but help you uh, with some resources so that it doesn't feel so impossible. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today, because we know that schools can play an important role in the work that we hope to achieve. And that's why the Department of Ag Agriculture has started this wonderful challenge called Healthier U.S. School Challenge. And the goal of this challenge is to find schools who are going to commit to making fresh, healthy food available. We want them to pledge that. That's part of the challenge. But in addition 
to making healthy foods available, getting rid of the junk food in the school, making that pledge, get rid of it, um, but also to be um, sure that they're setting aside time for physical activity during the day in the curriculum and teaching kids about uh, healthy food choices uh, during the day. And I am pleased to announce that there are about 635 schools from across the country who have met the challenge, and we have some of those schools with us today. Um, but my goal is to challenge more schools and more communities to take part in this, particularly um, middle and high school students, because right now those 635 students are at the elementary school level, and we need to take this challenge up to kids in middle schools and high schools. So I'm looking forward to visiting some of the schools that have joined the Health, Healthy School Challenge. That's a pledge that I have. If your school commits to this challenge, there's a possibility that I'll come and check it out. But I'm not coming if you're not a part of the challenge, right? So we want to get more schools uh, to follow this lead. And of course, changing old habits is never easy. That's why it's going to take a broader team effort with everyone pitching in, and it's going to take government doing its part. And that's why uh, this administration is going to be working hard to reauthorize our federal child nutrition program. Because with 30 million, million kids relying on a school breakfast or a lunch as one of their primary meals of the day, we need to make sure that these meals are nutritious and well-balanced and that more kids can have access so that they don't have to go hungry in school. And the chefs and nutritionists here today are going to show us how we can use the food that the USDA provides to schools uh, as a way to prepare really tasty, healthy foods. That's why they're here today, because they're going to take that food that you get in the schools and do some special stuff to show that with the food that we have, we can probably do even better than we're doing. Uh, we'll also need all of you kids to be a part of that. Now, I know you're dozing off. I see it. It's hot. I want to play. But we're going to need you, too. And what are we going to need you to do? Yes, sir. What? Stay healthy. stay healthy. And how do you stay healthy? You eating the right things. We're going to need you to help your parents with these choices. So when vegetables on your plate, we don't want to hear it. I don't want to eat it. I like it. It tastes bad. I don't want it. We don't want to hear the whining. We want you to eat it. Just eat it, right? And what else do we need you to do? If you're going to be strong and healthy, what do we need you to do? Be good, be healthy, and be nice. Yes. And exercise. You've got to play. So in order to play, you've got to turn off what? Turn off the TV. In our household, no TV during school days. And only a couple hours during the weekend. I'm sorry. But because the TV is off, my girls get up and they move. Even if they're pushing each other down, they're running. <laughs> so we're going to need you to help your parents. Turn off the TV on your own. Get up and throw a ball. Run around the house. Don't break anything. But move. Try to go outside if you can. That's why we're here at the White House, because we're reaching out to schools, to families, to kids, and we're inviting you guys to be a part of our team. Uh, and think about all of us doing our part. And one of the children who came here and helped us with the garden, this was a very powerful moment in this whole garden experience. It was after we planted and we harvested and we ate together. The kids talked about this experience. Some of the kids from Bancroft School, yay. They're a little older than you, but they were fifth graders. And one of them, a few of them wrote that she's she says she's a pretty regular fifth grader who loves sweets. And she said, because of her time in the garden, she said, has made me think about the choices I, I have with what I put in my mouth. So she learned about the power of what choices she makes. Not what her mom tells her what to do, not what her teachers, but the choices that she makes. And another child wrote, he said, it was inspired, it was, has inspired us to eat better and work harder. 
Uh, and then there was the student who wrote with great excitement about what he learned about tomatoes. I remember this because he read this report to me. He said, not just that they're both a fruit and a vegetable, but that they fight diseases like cancer and heart problems and that they have a lot of vitamins in them too. And armed with that knowledge, he declared, so the tomato is a fruit and it is now my best friend. <laughs> That's what we want you all to think that vegetables and fruits are not the enemy, it is the power to a good future. And in the end, that's what we're all trying to do here. That's why we've invited you to the South Lawn. That's why all these cameras are here. That's why Secretary Vilsack is here, because we are now focused on your future. And what are you going to feel like and be? And part of that has to do with your health. And it starts with how you eat and how you exercise. So we hope you guys are all game to join the fight. We hope that there, that, that there are schools all across this country that will join the challenge. We hope that there are, there are more parents that are going to be focused and thinking about ways that we can help you all. Um, but I now want to turn it over to Secretary Vilsack, who has been a phenomenal partner in this effort. Um, we couldn't do this without the work of the Department of Agriculture, and he is been steadfast in this, this fight to ensure that children have healthier options in the schools. So he has been a dear friend, and I want you all to give him a big round of applause and welcome him to the podium. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, boys and girls, I have a number of responsibilities today, but the first and most important responsibility I have besides welcoming you is to thank the First Lady. Uh, for her championing this effort. We, we could not have a better spokesperson in the entire country for this particular initiative than the First Lady. She has not only showed up to things like this, but she has actually worked in the garden. Uh, she helped focus uh, uh, our attention on the importance of raising fruits and vegetables. Uh, she has been a constant spokesperson uh, about physical activity and healthy eating. Uh, and. Uh, and First Lady, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because there are 30 million children who today are going to have school lunches, but tomorrow will have a better school lunch because of your advocacy. So thank you uh, for your efforts. And I appreciate you uh, uh, sharing with us uh, your, uh, your personal stories, uh, your family. Um, it brought back memories uh, in my family. And boys and girls, I started out uh, life in an orphanage. And uh, the first picture I have of myself as a child, uh, I have spinach all over my face. Uh, it was a very round face. Uh, but you know, sometimes I have a problem uh, between understanding the difference between everyday foods and sometimes foods. Yeah. See, I, I, I grew up thinking the cookies and pies and cakes and desserts were everyday foods. And they're not. They're sometimes foods. As the First Lady indicated, they're treats. The everyday foods are the fruits and vegetables that are going to help you grow strong. They're going to help you be able to do a better job in school. And that's what this country needs for you to do. We need you to be the best students you can possibly be. And in order for that to happen, you have to be well fed and you also have to be physically active. So it's part of my job and my responsibility to make sure that we do a good job, a better job than we've done in the past of making sure the meals that you have uh, available at school lunches and school breakfasts are as nutritious as they can be. And the First Lady mentioned the Reauthorization Act. That's a, that's a law that basically says it's part of the nation's responsibility to all of you uh, to make healthy meals available. And we're going to be working with uh, the First Lady and the President, the Congress, to try to make sure that we have the resources necessary for schools to be able to go out and purchase those fruits and vegetables and improve the, the quality of the meals. Because unfortunately, we're now getting studies from a lot of different places that have suggested that the meals that we're providing and the diets of young people today have far too much salt and far too much sugar and far too much trans fats, which makes it very difficult for folks to stay healthy. That's one of the reasons why we're currently faced with the fact we're seeing a growing obesity uh, epidemic among our children. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us to do everything we possibly can to give you a great start in life. And that means making sure that you are, 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 are well fed. It also means acknowledging the schools, as the First Lady indicated, who take the extra step of not only providing nutritious meals, but also making sure that you have time in a busy school schedule for physical activity. 
Uh, we are partnering with a variety of other uh, entities. Like the, the NFL, the National Football League, is encouraging 60 minutes of physical activity, and we support their effort. And schools are a very important part of that. Uh, and we want to make sure that we acknowledge, uh, through our Healthier U.S. School Challenge, those schools that go the extra mile to give children the very best start they can possibly get. And so we're going to be working hard because we know that the future of our children and the future of our country uh, depends on this. This is no small matter. And let me tell you how important it is. Uh, when I was asked by the President uh, to take this job as Secretary of Agriculture, I will never forget the first thing he said to me, the first instruction I got from my boss. It was very important. I expected him uh, to say something about farms and ranches and, and, and the farm bill. I expected him to maybe talk about uh, our responsibilities overseas with food aid. But he looked at me, and he was very clear about this. He said, I want our children to be fed more nutritious meals. That was the first instruction he gave me. So it's important to the President and the First Lady uh, that you are well fed. And I, and I just left the President's office, and uh, we just signed uh, the Agricultural Appropriations Bill, which includes additional resources uh, to, uh, to assist us in providing more fruits and vegetables, additional resources to help with summer feeding programs so that youngsters get nutritious meals. So let me finish where I, I began, by thanking the First Lady. Uh, we're going to put her in charge of weather. Um, she <laughs> seems to have a good hand with that. Uh, uh, she has just been a tremendous advocate for this. Uh, and I look forward to working under her leadership and direction uh, and making sure that we fulfill a promise that we make to you, to the children of America today. We're going to work as hard as we possibly can to make sure you have the great start that you deserve. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so now this is the easy part. We can have some fun. Uh, we've got stations set up where you can go by and uh, learn about nutrition and structuring good, healthy meals, but we also have some fun stuff going on. And I plan on jumping a little rope and doing a little hula hooping. So if you want to join me, let's get going. <laughs>